Kylie, an incoming freshman at MIT, and today I'm here in the middle of the Idaho desert to tell you about what MIT's campus preview weekend was like. Let's get started. So I went by myself to Cambridge, Massachusetts for the campus preview weekend, but you can bring your parents. There are some parent parent activities that you set up for parents and information sessions and all that, but you should also know that there are those kind of similar information sessions during orientation weekend. So if you are planning to definitely go to MIT, you don't have to go to those informational sessions at CBW. You can go to the ones at the orientation week um, the week you start school at MIT. Yeah, um, those are the ones my, my parents are planning to go to since they didn't go to CPW or the campus preview weekend. And so, um, yeah, so I went to Cambridge, Massachusetts by myself and um, I'm a frequent traveler, so flying wasn't that big a deal. And um, except when I got to the um, Boston airport, finding the buses that will take you to MIT that they have set up, they have some MIT shuttle set up, um, that was actually pretty difficult. Um, it's in a very secluded spot, so you have to go down to the luggage baggage claim area and then go all the way to the end. And so I had to actually ask for help a couple times because I absolutely had no idea where to go. They said to look for MI people wearing MIT sweatshirts, but there were none of them around, and so it was very difficult for me. But um, that was actually a very difficult way to start off Campus Preview Weekend, CBW, but um, from there it just went up. So, um, yeah. So once I got to MIT, um, my host student, yes, they have students stay with other students, um, she sent one of her friends to pick me up from the uh, student center. W20, that's what it's called, Student Center. And so I went to the Student Center and got like my badge and all of that other stuff they give you. And so um, from there I went to uh, my my host student sent no, another student to pick me up, and then she brought me to um, the dorm that I was going to be staying at. And from there she took me to my room, and um, it's I actually shared the room with my host student, like most. Um, incoming freshmen do and so um, from there it was actually a very fun time so I got to um, they like they all the different dorms get to set up different activities for all the incoming freshmen and not just the dorms but the fraternities and the sororities and the different clubs do and so for example one day at, um, the women's only dorm the women's only dorm um, the lion dance, the MIT lion dance club set up an okonomiyaki cooking, um, event for lunch. And they also put on a little mini performance, lion dance for performance for us. If you don't know what okonomiyaki is, it's a Japanese style, um, uh, Japanese style pancake, but it's savory. It's not sweet. It's a savory pancake made out of cabbage and, uh, flour and all that other normal, um, pancake stuff. Um, but, um, it's very delicious, <laughs> very Japanese. So if you have a chance to try it, I would definitely recommend it. Um, yeah, so there are events held by all the different clubs and all of the different fraternities, sororities, living groups, storms, all that kind of stuff. And so all of these are to kind of introduce you to life at MIT. And um, they also invite you to sit in on some MIT classes. I went and sat in on a Japanese class. It was very fun. Um, but I've heard some other people sat in on like engineering classes, science classes, math classes, all those kinds of things. And so you get to kind of see what um, academic life is at MIT. And also, besides from that, um, there's free food everywhere. Like I said, the okonomiyaki, there's also like ice cream made out of like liquid nitrogen, um, crepes, like all sorts of junk food, but there's also real food. Like there was a barbecue at East Campus, which is one of the dorms at MIT um, on the very, very east side of campus. That's why it's called East Campus. <laughs> um, and so also the dorms offer dorm tours during campus preview weekend. So you can kind of check out each of the individual dorms. I tried to go to every dorm to check them out to see which ones I would like to live in. I went to every single dorm except for Random Hall because Random Hall is pretty far out there. Um, yeah. So if you're um, an incoming student going to CBW, I would also recommend going to each dorm because um, even though during orientation, um, during the start in the fall, they say there's something called Rex, which is like the um, time to explore all the dorms. Um, a lot of people say it isn't enough time to check out all of them. So make sure to get a head start on that at CBW. 
yeah. So, um, CPW was a very, very fun time. Uh, I got to talk to a lot of MIT students about their lives at MIT, about how, what they thought about the dorms they lived in, um, their course load, things like that. And so it was very, very informational for me. And I actually got to meet some people who had the same interests as me at the different club activities. And I got to make a lot of new friends, which is very good, <laughs> since I'll be moving all the way across the country from Idaho to Massachusetts and I won't know anybody. So that'll be very good. Um, yeah, so I actually got a feel for the whole how extreme MIT is. Everybody says it's like drinking out of a fire hose. So but even though the course was very hard, you kind of work hard, play hard sort of mindset. And yeah. And one more thing before I go. Um, MIT has a hacking culture, if you weren't aware, where it's not the hacking in the sense of computer hacking, but the hacking in the sense of like hacking buildings. So you try and go to, um, you try and figure out ways to go to secret spots, um, maybe not so illegal spots <laughs> on buildings and things like that. So they had something called tangerine tours, which um, you go, you, everybody goes to, well not everybody, everybody who hears about it goes to this one big room underneath the big dome. And from there on, there are specific hackers at MIT who can select you and take your group on a tangerine tour where they take you a little mini hacking session around the buildings of MIT. Um, this is during the nighttime, so it's like a literal all-night sort of hacking session. It's supposed to introduce you to the hacking culture at MIT, but I didn't get to go. <laughs> I actually had one of my friends who was there take me hacking later. So I actually got a little bit of a taste of it, even though it wasn't the full tangerine tour. Um, and they also do orange tours during orientation in the fall. So if you didn't get to go to the tangerine tours, you actually get to go to the orange tours in the fall. Yeah, so if you're into some of that kind of stuff, MIT is definitely the place to go for you because that's their culture. Hacking culture is a large part of MIT. <laughs> if you want to be in it, let me get this straight. If you don't want a part of hacking culture, you don't have to be in it. Um, you can go to a dorm where there's literally no hackers and <laughs> be disassociated from all of that. <laughs> yeah. So um, that's kind of how my experience at CBW went. It started off pretty badly, but over the whole weekend, it was a lot of fun. Um, I got a lot of uh, good food, made new friends, um, got to experience a lot of what MIT is about. And if you happen to be accepted to MIT, I would definitely recommend going to CPW to experience it for yourself. So that was it. See you next time. Bye.